I now call upon His Excellency President Hakainde Hichilema, the President of the Republic of Zambia, Chair of the Common Market for East and Southern African Commerce. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Ramaphosa. Due recognition to you, um, other BRICS leaders, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, and all the dignitaries that are here from all our countries that are present or represented and other organizations, UN, fully recognized, thank you. First, let me congratulate President Ramaphosa for hosting this BRICS summit and inviting many of us uh, to the summit. Thank you, President Ramaphosa. Um, I also wish to effectively and firmly um, endorse the importance of this summit um, in providing us with an enhanced opportunity uh, to work with the BRICS countries to be able to support our developmental agendas in our individual countries, regions, continent of Africa and elsewhere. Mr. Chairman, we wish to express our appreciation that this forum provides to enhancing our partnership and in fostering development, as I said. And because of the importance of this uh, platform, Mr. Chair, I simply want to express what uh, we believe are critical as Zambia, commercial countries, we see this as a rare opportunity to address the challenges we've kept on talking about for a long time and on many platforms. One, that we need to reform the global order. In particular, to address the inequities associated with critical ingredients to development, such as capital. The cost of capital is what I'm talking about. Africa, as we have already acknowledged, pays a higher cost of capital than any other on the globe. Certainly, the BRICS platform could and should be used to work through, to expedite the reform processes around this issue, which is inhibiting development, which our young populations much need to create opportunities for education, health, uh, business, work, as it were, and other life-improving activities. Secondly, Mr. Chairman, to address access to technology. Access to technology so we can then engage in the genuine and mutually beneficial partnerships which we keep talking about all the time. Partnership that would deliver value for all our economies, our regions, continent of Africa, as well as obviously contribute positively to world global economic success, which is important because global success, Mr. Chairman, it cannot be talked about in isolation. You can't call a global success to be there or delivered when a lot of countries are left behind, yet they are richly endowed with resources. So when we look at these opportunities, we look at the total resource envelopes that we all bring to the table, capital at a fair price, technology, of course, at a fair price, but also the resource endowments, such as critical minerals, that are important to the industry of the future, EV industry, for example. So one of the things, Mr. Chairman, that we would like as Zambia, as Comesa, Africa, to endorse firmly is that as the BRICS nations look to enhance relationships with us in Africa and elsewhere, Asia, elsewhere, South America, the Global South, if I may say, we need to consciously agree that relationships must be structured in a manner that allows enhancement of domestic economic growth of those that are associated with the BRICS, and also using BRICS, Mr. Chairman, as an opportunity to correct the relationships that were structured wrongly with the old order that old order which we are now talking about reforming, we now have an opportunity under the BRICS platform to enter in those relationships in a reformed manner 
that, for example, ensures that when we exploit resources, we must invest in value addition in the host countries where those resources are located. It benefits the investors, collective basket of investors. It creates opportunities for our young African population and invariably, Mr. Chairman, delivers an opportunity to stabilize Africa, political, civil stability, which is important. I want to conclude in the interest of time, Mr. Chairman, to reiterate the fact that we now have an opportunity once again, the globe has an opportunity once again with the BRICS platform to work together to realize the enormous opportunities within BRICS, Africa, Asia, South America, Global South, let's call it that, that would deliver mutual benefits for all our individual countries and, of course, the continent. No question about that. Mr. Chairman, all of this should happen in the environment of peace, security, and stability once more in our individual countries, regions, Africa, continents, elsewhere, and the global community. Thank you very much. I now have the honor to call upon His Excellency Ishmael Omar Gwele, the President of the Republic of Djibouti and Chair of the Intergovernmental Authority on Development, IGAD. Thank you, Chair. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So, His Excellency Cyril Farama Poza, President of the Republic of South Africa, Excellencies, Heads of States and Governments, Distinguished Guests, Leaders and Guests. Firstly, I would like to express my appreciation to His Excellency President Cyril Ramaphosa, the President of the Republic of South Africa, and the people of South Africa for their warm welcome and hospitality during our visit to this beautiful country. On behalf of all members of, the, of IGAD, as well as myself, I would like to extend my gratitude to you, Mr. Chairman, for inviting me to attend this 15th BRICS Summit held in Africa under African chairmanship with a focus on our continent. The partnerships between BRICS and Africa goes beyond convenience. It is a strategic imperative. Together, we have the power to reshape the landscape, promote inclusive growth, and eradicate poverty. By joining forces, we can create a world where no nation is left behind, where prosperity is shared equally, and where sustainable development becomes reality. Africa possesses resources, and when combined with the technological capability capabilities and investment potential of BRICS, it opens up unparalleled opportunities for both regions. By allocating resources to infrastructure, energy, agriculture, and manufacturing sectors, we can generate employment opportunities, enhance productivity, and uplift millions from poverty. This is a moment to seize in order to establish connections, promote trade activities, and enable technology transfer that will ensure Africa's emergence as a global economic powerhouse. Djibouti stands as a committed partner and ally to BRICS nations. We are also supporters of the African Union-led efforts toward economic integration through the implementation of the African Comprehensive Free Trade Agreement. It is a step that places Africa in its rightful position within the global order. We appreciate your efforts to advance and strengthen the partnership between 
BRICS and the continent. In summits, we have already identified key areas of focus that contribute to a mutually beneficial partnership. Your leadership in enhancing the, re the relationship between BRICS and Africa serves as a motivation for us to make con substantial contributions towards our shared goals and interests. Dear Chairman, I eagerly commend the BRICS partnership for creating a platform that offers an opportunity to diversify the expand and expand the global economic landscape. Undoubtedly, BRICS is a force with politically and economically. It is a success story evident from the growing number of countries aspiring to join this group, as well as the commendable performance of the new Development Bank with its extensive portfolio of projects aimed at maximizing development impact. I am delighted to announce that IGAD fully aligns with and supports the priorities outlined by the BRICS Chair for 2023. Specifically, Africa and IGAD aim to mobilize investment in order to develop infrastructure that connects parts of our continent, thereby boosting intra-African trade growth and value chains. Indeed, INGAD takes pride in being one of the fundamental elements of the African continent free trade area. We wholeheartedly welcome the important role that BRICS can play in supporting our collective endeavors as a continent to drive trade, investment, and infrastructure development within the context of this momentous undertaking. As we all know, it is widely understood that economic plans and agendas often falter without sustained commitment and financial backing. Therefore, we warmly embrace the opportunity to further explore and expand upon some of the ideas and decisions that were discussed during meetings of BRICS Africa Outreach BRICS Plus Dialogue in 2013 and 2018. We sincerely hope that the establishment will extend its support to Africa's effort in bridging the enormous infrastructure gap across our continent. According to data from the African Development Bank, Africa requires an annual investment of $170 billion for comprehensive infrastructure improvements. The combination of external shocks that, has, that have disrupt, disrupted progress in many countries along with high borrowing costs and increasing debt service obligations has made it challenging for our economies to attract new financial resources. Africa, with its resources, youthful population, and untapped potential has become a symbol of hope and opportunity. It is a continent that has faced challenges and that continues to rise with resilience and determination. Today, Africa finds itself at a turning point where it can unleash its potential and make substantial contributions to the globally, global economy. Mr. Chairman, distinguished guests, at the core of the IGAD mandate, mandate is the obligation to strengthen multilateralism. Additionally, one of our principles is enhancing women's participation in peace process. Indeed, it is only last week that we launched the IGAD Women Peace 
and security forum as part of our own unwavering commitment harness the transformative power of women's contributions to peace building and conflict resolution. Finally, we support the call for reforms to the international architecture and address the ossification of inequalities, gaps, and inefficiencies. We need to relent relentlessly work together to ensure that the new architecture is reset to be relevant to today's global challenge. Let's take advantage of this partnership today to strengthen the ideals and spirit of growth so that we can pave the way for a brighter and more prosperous future for all our people. I thank you.